بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear sisters, my dear daughters Welcome back to another new episode of uh, our uh, blessed journey in Asma'ullah al-Husna And uh, alhamdulillah we are uh, now making um, uh, more uh, close relation to such asma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And such names of Allah and I hope that my sisters now and my daughters uh, knows exactly um, how to uh, make supplication and how to make dua uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using the, uh, the name and the suitable names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, he uh, told about himself. Uh, yes. I just want to tell you about the first um, hadith that we have all the time at the beginning of our episode from the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam when he's talking about the uh, names of Allah, uh, that Prophet Muhammad والسلام, said, uh, Verily, Allah has 99 names, uh, 100 but one, whosoever knows each and every one of them, uh, which, and we said how to know uh, such names by believing in them and works according to them enter uh, the paradise. Today, actually, we have two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and they are um, usually coming with each other uh, in the Quran and um, uh, they are very very interesting and precious names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first name is Al-Hay Al-Hay or the ever living Al-Hay uh, what is Al-Hay and who is Al-Hay Al-Hay, the ever-living, is the uh, meaning the eternally living one. The eternally living one. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the absolute source of life and source of all perfected qualities. Uh, he is the one who will remain and will never die. Uh, his life is perfect in every sense, which requires all perfect attributes and negates all, all their opposite. When we are saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the perfect attributes, at the same time, uh, it has the same meaning that we negate all the opposites of such attitude. And these perfect attitudes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is keeping him alive and keeping him active all the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala neither sleep nor slumber overtake him any time. Any drowsiness, any um, uh, certain uh, um, uh, nap or sleeping, this is, will not happen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the name of Allah al Hay came actually in Quran around five times, and um, most of it, three of them came with uh, another and uh, other names that we're going to have it today also, who is Al Qayyum, Al Hayy Al Qayyum. Uh, we'll find this came in Surah Al-Baqarah in Ayah 255, which is Ayat Al-Kursi. We're going to have it, inshallah, uh, today. Uh, Ayat Al-Kursi is a very precious Ayah, and uh, the beginning of this Ayah is uh, uh, Allah, la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. Allah, there is no God by He, uh, the ever-living, the all-sustainer. No other God that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ever living and the all sustainer that we're going to have it inshallah, uh, Al Qayyum. So, this ayah uh, is the ayat al Kursi, as we mentioned, uh, it's present in Surah Al Baqarah. Also, we have the same name came in the second ayah of Surah Al Imran, Allah uh, la ilaha illa huwa al Hayyul Qayyum, the same ayah. Allah, there is no uh, deity, except, uh, deity except Him, uh, the ever living, the sustainer of existence. Uh, also, we have uh, another ayah came in Surah Al Furqan, ayah 58. Wa tawakkal ala al And rely upon the ever living 
who doesn't die and exalt Allah with his praise. And, and sufficient is he to be with the sins of his servants acquainted. Uh, and this is actually uh, the, the talk came to Prophet Muhammad والسلام, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him to lie on the ever living or the uh, al hay the ever living uh, we see here also in uh, Surah Ghafir ayah 65 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying huwa al hayyu la ilaha illa huwa fad'uhu mukhlisina lahu al-deen Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. He is the ever living. There is no deity except him. So call upon him, being sincere to him. Uh, and in religion, all praise is uh, due to Allah, Lord of the words. Uh, and this is in Surah Ghafir 55. Uh, so as we mentioned, as we see here that this is all the ayat come with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the uh, Al-Hay. Uh, here uh, again with uh, how to know the name of Allah in the Quran and the Sunnah. Here in the Sunnah is in the uh, hadith of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. It's apparent from the Sunnah of authentic Sunnah that the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam uh, he loved to call on Allah by these names, Al-Hay, Al-Qayyum, the ever-living, the all-sustainer. When the Prophet والسلام, felt any distress, he would say, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, bi rahmatika astaghith. O ever-living, O sustainer, in your mercy I seek, uh, I seek relief. So, as we can see here, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the name of Allah, Al-Hay, which uh, all the time is with us, all the time uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, uh, uh, is present around us and all the source of life is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how Prophet Muhammad even alayhi salatu was salam when uh, he was in any distress he used to uh, mention the name of Allah al-Hay as a, a way of supplication. Uh, now we go to the benefits. What is the benefits from the uh, name of Allah Al-Hay or the ever-living? Uh, so uh, the first, usually our first um, point in um, calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or making dua by this name. When uh, I will make dua by this name? I make dua by this name when I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me live to make me live with the uh, Islamic manner, with uh, the, doing the good deeds. Uh, and this is what we're going to have, inshallah, in the uh, next uh, points. How you live uh, by the name of Allah, Al-Hay, or the ever-living. So the first thing is to call him by his name, Al-Hay, if you want to live as a proper Muslim or the or Muslim obeying of obeying believer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, number two, to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came before everything. Uh, as we mentioned before, if you are remembering in the name of Allah al-awwal, when we said he is the, uh, the, the, the all first, the, he is never, no one before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, being he is no, no one before him and he is the living who is also the source of life. He's giving, he, he is the first, all the first and he gave the life for all the uh, crea uh, creation uh, in this universe and from the angels and from the jinn and from all what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. He was the source of life to give them the life and everything we go, goes back to him back uh, and so will we all of us will go back to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his decree on uh, on this uh, universe that he created all the creatures uh, with a life the life span even we are saying it in in medicine as life span what's life span that everything that has a life time the beginning of the life and the end of life uh, all the creatures, uh, is it mankind, insects, plants, uh, animals, an angels, even the angels, 
uh, the, the earth, the, the heaven, and this is what happened. This is what will happen, inshallah, during the day of resurrection that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will make everything, uh, will make uh, it died. Even uh, Jibreel alayhi salam, Jibreel alayhi salam is the boss of the, all the angels, he will be died also. Even the angel of the uh, concerning with death or the one who is taking spirits also will die. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling that, and by the sunnah we know that uh, there is an ayah in Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَحَّارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this moment when all the creatures will be uh, died and uh, no one will be alive except the ever living, at that time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say who will be the king today? So actually he will ask this question and no one will answer because no one is alive. All the creatures being died. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reply on himself and said, It is for only the kingship now is only for Allah, the only one, the all uh, powerful. This is uh, a very um, uh, precious moment that no one of us will uh, witness it but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the Quran and we know that tafsir from Surah that this will happen all the creatures will uh, be uh, died and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be alone and he is, uh, will uh, say such a statement and then after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his order and by his uh, decree will revive people again for uh, the hisab or the accountability at the day of judgment. So this is the ever living. I'm just telling that to tell you what is who is the ever living or al hay. Uh, also, from uh, the benefits of this name, to know that the real life for the believers is living for the sake of Allah. Really, my daughters and my sisters, if you just put this in your mind and you keep this from uh, in your mind from this episode, it will be enough for me. That uh, you will learn from the name of Allah al Hay to live your life for the sake of Allah and for the pleasure of Allah. How could you live your uh, life for the sake of Allah and for the pleasure of Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that in Surah Al-An'am, Ayah 122, uh, what he said that, and is one who was dead, and we gave him life, and made for him light by which to walk among the people, like one who is in darkness, never to emerge uh, therefrom. Thus, uh, it has, thus it has, um, being made pleasing to the disbelievers that which they were doing. Actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is giving a very uh, precious picture and image about the comparison between the believer and disbeliever. Uh, and he's giving us an image that the one who is disbeliever like a dead man, who has no life, no real life in, he, in him, uh, and that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, when he give you the bounty and the favor of being a proper Muslim and a believer, this is like, uh, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing and is one who was dead. This is before being a believer. And we gave him life. We gave him life by being a believer and a true Muslim and proper Muslim. And made for him light by which to walk among the people. So as if the uh, true believer that is his life for the sake of Allah, he, he did all the things for the sake of Allah, uh, he uh, just smiling to others, he help others, uh, she can do whatever she can to support others. This is like light, like what you have light in the darkness. Uh, imagine when you are in a garden and then it came the, uh, the darkens after the Isha, for example, and you find yourself in this dark garden and there is no source of light. If you have just your mobile as a source of light and just put it on, it will be a, a great thing to happen. 
the source of light in the severe darkens, it will be so precious, so precious, and uh, it will give you the way you are looking for. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, making the image of the true believer when he is walking with the others, with the other people. E either they are disbelievers or even they are believers, but they are not uh, obedient enough. So the one who are obedient to Allah and proper Muslim to Allah is like that. You giving the light, you give the light to others. You are inspiring others by your attitude, by your behavior, by your way. All these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing it in the word light, which actually it, it's a very, very precious uh, image that if we can uh, imag uh, uh, imagine it, it will be great. Another ayah also in Surat An Nahl, ayah 97. Whoever does righteous, whether male or female, while he is a believer, we will surely cause him to live a good life. We'll, good, we'll, we'll surely cause him to live a good life. And we will surely give them their reward in the hereafter, according to the best of what they used to do. And this is um, a glad tidings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all the true believers and the righteous people and see here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very uh, all the just and very uh, is, is the, the, the ayah is very accurate that it brings the male and female both of them the female and the male Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, every one of them accountable uh, for their deeds uh, the male like a female there is no difference between them this is number one number two Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying those who are believers and they, uh, they did right uh, or good deeds. And we said that before. And we said that to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept uh, your good deeds. Uh, you have to believe in what you are doing. Which is the niyyah or the intention that you are doing this or such uh, a good deed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is number one. And number two, and this good deed should be following the sunnah. Should be following what Prophet Muhammad came with and what the Quran came with. It shouldn't be from your, uh, in, uh, uh, from your invention or a new innovation. This is very important. This is to be out from the term bid'ah, bid'ah, the innovation. So for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your deed, it should you have the niyyah that the intention, this deed will be for the sake of Allah, number one. And number two, to be according to the sunnah and to the Quran and the sunnah. So the one who will do that, to be a true believer and do the righteous deeds, Allah, what will make fear for him, will cause him to live. See here, live. So we're still in our life. Live a good life. What is a good life? Is it a good life uh, to have um, wealth, to have uh, authority, to be famous, to, be, uh, to have uh, fan, fans everywhere? No. Actually, the good life for any Muslim pro, uh, or believer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is make him uh, pleased with what Allah decreed on him. And uh, this a, a very famous uh, hadith for Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ أَمْرُهُ كُلُّهُ خَيْرٍ إِنْ أَصَابَهُ سَرَّاءَ uh, شَكَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ دَرَّاءَ صَبَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ uh, Prophet Muhammad Ali Salatu Wasalam, he said, all, uh, all for all the uh, things that happen to the believer is good for him. Every, anything will happen to the Muslim will be good for him. If it is something that he likes or he's pleased with, so uh, he will uh, be gratitude to Allah and say Alhamdulillah and uh, he feel the bounty and the favor of Allah of, on him. And if something happened to him which seems to be difficult or hardship, what he will do, he will be patient. He will be patient with continent and uh, with trust, complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is the one who can uh, remove this hardship and remove this bala. And remember that what we uh, said in the beginning of our episodes will, uh, when we were during the peak of the COVID-19 and how the uh, 
uh, circumstances and all the uh, internationally uh, worried and anxious about what's happening. And at that time, we said we have to be patient. We have to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to be trusted, it is, uh, inshallah, it will be a transitory and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove this uh, bala and we keep uh, and we said that we must keep dua all the time for Allah to remove this bala. And alhamdulillah, by time, alhamdulillah, it's better now. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for complete removal, inshallah, on all the uh, countries, uh, this uh, bala. So this is a good life. This is a good life that will for the believer, that he always pleased with Allah. Always uh, uh, think that his life is good uh, when it, it is for the sake of Allah. When it is a sick for anything else, it will not be good life. He will not be lived, he will not be liked. If he just think all the time of his money, of his wealth, of his children, uh, uh, that um, maybe when I said it's the children, of course, we are, all of us are thinking, but don't make them uh, your happiness and your sadness and your, no, there is all, all, all the time, you are giving him the guide, giving them the guide, and they should follow the guide, and then you rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But not make yourself, all your life is uh, depending on the, the, them. This is very important because every one of us will go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his own, and will have his own account, account and he will be accountable for himself only. So it's good that we we take uh, we, we we raise our children for the sake of Allah, but at the same time we have to do uh, also uh, the good deeds for the ourselves. Uh, this is uh, one issue. So any uh, anything that we're going to live away from the sake of Allah will not make us happy. Will not make us having this light that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is talking about. Uh, for back for the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will those who are making the good deeds with the belief in Allah will have uh, a good life and also in the hereafter what will happen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them their rewards in the hereafter. Uh, the last point in the benefits of name of Allah al hayy to rely only on al hayy the ever living and the everlasting and this is very important because sometimes people, when they have problems, uh, they start to tell them, okay, you can go to that uh, president or uh, that uh, CEO of this organization or uh, that one, he can help you uh, and start the uh, person just to put in his mind, in her mind that this, um, this sister or uh, this uh, president will help her and he is the saver and he's everything. No. Okay, you can seek for the help, you can seek for uh, what's um, better for, the, it can help you. But at the same time, you have to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who can uh, solve the, your problem. Maybe he can solve the problem through that person, but uh, when do your problem solve it, please remember that the solver of your pro problem is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by making such a man or such a woman, who helped you, it's just a cause, it's just um, a, a way or it's just a, a method of helping. But the original of the help, the origin of the help, the origin of support, the origin of uh, your uh, victory is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very important, my uh, sisters and daughters, that we have to rely first, number one, number one, number one is on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we can search uh, for the help of uh, the other people that can help us. Um, for the related story for the name of Allah, al Hay, the ayah in the Surah Al Furqan that I didn't go through, that uh, it's tafsir because uh, I just um, left it for the uh, related story. The ayah is telling rely upon the ever living who doesn't die and exalt Allah with his praise and sufficient is he to be with the sins of his servants. I wanted, what does it mean? This is, uh, ayah actually is um, re revealed for on Prophet Muhammad والسلام, when he was in Mecca and we know that uh, he suffered so much when he was in Mecca and uh, how many objections he had, denial to his message 
and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him this verse to support him and to make him depend only on Allah, uh, the ever living, and say subhanallah, uh, walhamdulillah, all the time. And it's enough for him to have Allah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his guardian, who knows the bad deeds and actions of his enemies. When you are having an enemies or someone who are planning bad things for you, you have to depend on Allah on that to help you, to support you and to guide you because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is know what they are doing. No one can know, even if you have a bodyguard, if you have someone to protect you, what he will do. He will just keep, uh, keep standing in front of your house just to guard you from anyone can come and attack your house. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is knowing who will come if there is come and what he is thinking and what he will do and what they are doing if they are group. And he is the one who could um, defeat them all and make their conspiracy and their plotting in the ground. So wh who is better for me? To depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what happened all the time with Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, and how many times he, they tried to kill him, they tried to have a plot, a conspiracy against him, but every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him, don't worry, I am with you, don't worry, I am protecting you, depend on me, rely on me. And this is actually now is for us. The Quran is, came, came and revealed on Prophet Muhammad, but it's talking to us now, don't worry. Just rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go with sincere, go with devotion to Allah. Whenever you go with devotion and sincere to Allah, trust that you are with the king of the kings, as we mentioned, the owner, the owner of the universe. What more you want? You are with the owner. If you are, if the owner of the universe with you, who against you? You will not find one against you. And even if there is against you, Allah will protect you, inshallah. So this is regarding the uh, name of Allah, Al-Hay. Now we'll come to another uh, stick, the name to Al-Hay, Al-Qayyum, the All Sustainer. The All Sustainer means Al-Qayyum comes from the roots of Arabic um, word Qama. Qama, which means stand upright or to stand upright. This is the origin of uh, the name. And of course, we said that all the name also is uh, hyperbole or uh, that uh, coming to um, exaggeration uh, form that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only to stand up, He's always, always, all the time is standing and preserving all the universe for us. So He is the one by whom all things are eternally managed right. And He is the self sufficient master who is not in need of anyone. Everything exists because of him. Everything other than him needs him and totally depends on him. When we said Al-Qayyum, that uh, he is responsible for it, everything to be managed right eternally by him. And everything in need of his management and of his maintenance. When we said all the sustainer, he is uh, not only the creator, remember, what we, we said before, he's a creator, originator, and fashioner. And now we can say the all sustainer that is not creation and fascinating and originating, but to keep uh, all the things in the, uh, uh, it's the perfect form, the perfect form of the distance between the earth and the sun, the perfect distance between the sun and the moon, if it's just very one milliseconds um, is, uh, different, all the universe could be in a, uh, a disequilibrium and it can be uh, explode in one uh, second. And this is what makes all the scientists now, that is especially in the, the space and the astronomy, how they are very, on the physics, of course, physics uh, sci uh, scientists, they are astonishing and surprised all uh, the time when you have uh, their. Um, speech how all this of course the one who are atheists or are not believing in creator they want they wanted to try to make this explanation anything else um 
uh, but the presence of creator but every time they fail they fail they try to know how all these things at, at last they have the one conclusion that there must be the a sustainer sustainer all sustainer of uh, such universe we are on uh, in the Quran, we can find the name of Allah, Al-Qayyum, in Ayat Al-Kursi, as we mentioned. Ayat Al-Kursi, by the way, is very precious ayah. And according to Prophet Muhammad, والسلام, that this ayah should be recited every, every day in the morning and in the evening by the Askar during the, uh, uh, the remembrance of Allah during evening and um, morning. And also this ayah is protects you from the shaitan and protects you from the jinn. Uh, this ayah actually is uh, one of the, the best of the precious and the glorious ayah in Quran. Allah, there is no deity except him. So this is the Tawheed, having the meaning of Tawheed or the oneness of Allah, the ever-living, the sustainer. al hayyul qayyum Neither drowness overtake him nor sleep. So this is from the meanings of Al-Qayyum. Al-Qayyum means standing all the time for the sustaining of the world and universe to him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth as we mentioned in the definition who is that uh, who is it that can intercede with him except by his permission and he knows what is presently before them and what will be after them complete all knower of everything and they encompass and they encompass not a thing of his knowledge the all knowledgeable this is uh, you see uh, many multiple names now we are passing through the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming here in this ayah uh, although we are not uh, saying it literally but we have the first thing that the oneness of Allah followed followed by the ever living the sustainer and after that to him is belongs which is a samad we're going to take it inshallah one of the names of Allah and he uh, know um, uh, knows what everything which is the all knower all knowing we accept we we took that and uh, the encompassing he's encompassing everything no one can encompass a thing in his knowledge al wasa this is what we took also from the name of allah the all encompasser um except for what he wills his course extends his course is the supporter of the throne extends over the heaven the supporter only the supporter of the throne extends over the heaven and the earth and their preservation tires him not he's not tired he's not tired by uh, by his work and this is actually very important uh, to know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala although that he is sustainer and all ever living he's not feeling tired than, than uh, like us he's never feel tired and he is the most high, again, this is another name of Allah, and the most great, and this is another name of Allah. So see how much this glorious ayah, that majestic ayah, contain many names of the names of Allah, even it is literally, uh, literally said, or it is through the meanings of the ayah. That's why uh, I just advise myself, and I advise you to uh, continue reciting this ayah, especially as Prophet Muhammad والسلام, said in the morning and in the evening. Uh, another uh, ayah which have the meaning of Al-Qayyum. Uh, it's not literally mentioned here, Al-Qayyum, but it have the meaning. Inna Allah yumsiku samawati wal ard an tazula wa la in zalata in amsakahuma min ahadim min ba'dihi innahu kana haliman ghafura. This is word ghafir. Ayah 41, indeed Allah holds the heaven and the earth, lest they cease. And if they should cease, no one could hold them in place after him. Indeed, he is a forbearing and exceedingly forgiving. And this is a very clear uh, uh, clarification of what we are doing for the name of Allah, Al-Qayyum. Uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us an example about the heaven and about the earth and how they are stabilized by the uh, all by the all sustainer and if anyone other allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking care of their sustaining they will fall down the 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 heaven and the earth will be collapsed and this is a very clear image and explanation of the name of allah al-qayyum 
uh, here from the Sunnah, uh, once a man pray to Allah saying, Oh Allah, I ask you as all praise is yours. There is no God except you. You are Al-Mannan, which means a festival, the originator of the heavens and earth, possessor of majesty and honor. O oh, ever living, al hay O oh, self subsisting, uh, subsisting or uh, sustainer, the Prophet والسلام, heard him and said he has supplicated to Allah using his greatest name. When supplicated with this name, he answers, and when he asked with this name, he gives. And the hadith is Sahih in Abu Dawood. So here. Prophet Muhammad was was hearing one of the companion. We don't know we don't know the name of the companion of this this companion, but he he heard him saying this du'a, and he said actually in this du'a he uh, supplicated to Allah with his greatest name, that if anyone supplicated Allah with this name, he will when he asked him uh, he will give you, when he answers you, and when he ask with this name supplicated with him he will answer, and when we ask he will give you. This is from the uh, Sunnah. Uh, also, um, we're going now to the benefits. The benefits of the name of Allah, Al Qayyum. Uh, again, number one, call him by his name. When I call him by his name, when I want my uh, things and my uh, life. Things in my life I'm worried about. I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep it on the right way, to keep it aright, to the right way, to the right pathway. I am uh, calling Al Qayyum. And uh, it's preferable that we do that, Prophet Muhammad, uh, when we have in the authentic sunnah. Anything distress me, anything stress me, I'll go uh, definitely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make two rak'ahs prayer and start making dua. Ya Hayu, Ya Qayyum, bi rahmatika astaghif. Aslih li sha'ni kullahu wa la takilni ila nafsi tarfat ayin. And this is uh, what we have here. Have trust in Al Qayyum who encompasses all of his other attributes that pertain to managing the affairs of his creation, such as being the trustee, the protector, the most wise. So trust in Al-Qayyum. This is very important to have a trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make everything right for you. When you feel you are unable, call Al-Qayyum, like what Prophet Muhammad said, as we mentioned, Ya Hayu, Ya Qayyum, bi rahmatika astaghir. Escape to Al Qayyum when you defeated or attacked, and he will protect you and guide you. Uh, this is very important that we have to um, have our um, trust in Allah, especially at the time we were defeated or we feel that we are low. At that time, we go to Al Qayyum to make us again. It's like when we fell down or we fell uh, in our uh, personality, we said that we, we fell down or we are not feeling well by the sense or by doing sense. Go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Qayyum. He will make you again. You, he will make you stand up again on your feet and just will continue, will continue doing the good things. So don't make the bad uh, deeds or the sense make you fell and stop doing uh, the good things and stop continuing on the right pathway. No, all of us are making bad uh, deeds and all of us are making sense because this is our nature as a human being, as a mankind, we are not angels. Since we are not angels, expected from us to have sins and Allah is expecting that we're going to have sins. But what we should do, e quickly and immediately repent to Allah and have the uh, decision that I will never come back to such type of sin. Maybe I'll come back to another type of sin, but the proper repentance that I uh, make a promise with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I will not come back to such, uh, again, such sin. So this is very important to have this meaning in our minds that when we have sins, that means that we fell down. What we need when we feel down, we need to call Allah Al-Qayyum to make us 
uh, be stand up again on the right way, on the right pathway, and start to make repentance and ask for forgiveness and continue our path on the astarat al mustaqim or the right pathway. So this is the feelings that al that al qayyum help you to stand upright again. This is a very important meaning. I hope that you properly understand it. That uh, the sins and the bad deeds is make us fell, and if we need the help of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He will make us again stand and continue our path. Uh, finally, we're going to have the related story to the name of Allah Al Qayyum, and actually, it is the hadith that um, speak about the advice Prophet Muhammad Ali Sallallahu gave to his daughter Fatma, radiyallahu anha, Fatima Zahra. Uh, may, uh, may Allah be pleased with her to say in the morning and in the evening Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum By your mercy I seek help Rectify for me all of my affairs And do not leave me to depend on myself Even for the blink of an eye يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك استغيث أصلح لي شأني كله ولا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين This is a very precious dua and this is what Prophet Muhammad supposed to make this dua and also he advised his lovely daughter the one who loved her so much his daughter Sayyida Fatima Zahra and telling her um, when he was dying she was very sad and she started to cry and um, she, she feel that she will lose her father. At that time, she's, he, will, he told her, don't be sad, don't be sad, you will follow me. After you will follow me, you will be the first of my family, you will follow me after the death of Prophet Muhammad. And this has actually happened after Prophet Muhammad died by six months. As Sayyida Fatima, she died after, passed away after him, and she was the first one of his uh, relatives to, jo to join him in, uh, uh, I mean, to pass away after him. So he was uh, loving her so much, and she was very precious to him. And that's why we, he, we, when you love someone, you want to give him a precious gift. And this is the gift that Prophet Muhammad gave his daughter, this dua, when she feels distressed and when she feels, when she passed by hardship, what she will say, Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, by your mercy, I seek your help to rectify for me all of my affairs. This is what I'm saying. What we said in the call him by his name, Al Hayu Al Qayyum, to have, you have many affairs need to be fixed in your life and need to be repaired and need to be rectified. Who will do that all 24 hours? 24/7. Who will do that for you? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Because you you are you, you are not capable to fix your things. You have to sleep. You have uh, tired. You have. But who are 24/7 with you all the time? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And who is giving us this advice? Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. That's uh, what. That's why this dua is very precious. And I advise all of our daughters and sisters, if you have any hardship or any difficult um, circumstances passing by you, just go on with this dua, inshallah, uh, like Prophet Muhammad. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم سبحانك اللهم بحمدك لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك.